everybody. Lucy Fisher uh, and Doug Wick, our producers. Just to prove that it happened. Most importantly, <laughs> and Veronica Roth. Okay, we're good to go. Steve? Hi, congratulations, everybody. I'd love to ask uh, Neil and Veronica. Veronica, you've got a big producing credit along with Lucy and Doug on this movie. So, what were your uh, anxieties or considerations about? The, the adaptation of this trilogy for you with the movies and Neil working with Veronica was that inhibiting in, in any way having the author so plugged in what the movie was going to be. My um, my anxieties I think are, are just you know the standard anxieties of any author who hands over their work to be adapted. Um, but I also know, I mean, from the second the book hits the shelf, it stops belonging to the person who wrote it, and it starts belonging to everyone who reads it. So I was uh, pretty well practiced in letting it go a little bit, which I think is a good thing. Um, because there's no way that they can be exact replicas of each other. And they shouldn't be. They're different mediums. Um, so that they should communicate in different ways. Um, and so my anxieties were uh, very much assuaged by the people I chose to hand it over to. Um, and I, I had a lot of trust for them in the decisions that they would make. Um, and I think seems like that trust was well founded <laughs> since I love the movie. So um, I'm really happy with the way it all turned out. But I think that's the key is just uh, for me it was finding out, finding people that I trusted to respect your work and to love it and to do good things with it. I mean, for me, the, my, the challenge is for me, it was the same for Doug and Lucy who, who you know, started out developing the screenplay was really fitting all of that story into a movie and because we really love the story and loved all the different characters and all the different events, but a movie is is just a different beast in the book. You know, she's written something that's 400 plus pages, and we're working with something that's 100 pages, and just has different, you know, different uh, different needs, different dramatic needs. And so, really, the challenge was just fitting all that story, that story that we loved, into it. And we actually, there are a lot of events in the movie, and they are compressed, and and it has kind of a a crazy pace because of that, and and I think we really just decided to just get it all in there as best we could, and so then the trick was to have make that work. <coughs> was it inhibiting at all because of your other movies? Oh, to work with, yeah, no, yeah. Veronica's really unpleasant and, and it's um, <laughs> and very intimidating. No, it was fantastic actually because because the world is in in creating a world um, of of the movie. Um, there are so many questions that come up and so to have the the source um, at you know right next to me or at the end of the phone and to be asked like where do they use money do they how do they where do they get what do they do what happened and what happened a hundred years ago really and what's also happening down the line the book was and Veronica populated the book with so many landmarks of Chicago and that did help ground just make it seem accessible and make it seem, as Neil said, recognizable. And a funny thing happened to me, which is we had done such a good job of selling the studio how we had to be in Chicago because it was so real. And Doug and I were driving around Chicago the first day and we passed the Ferris wheel. I said, oh my God, it looks just like the Ferris wheel as she described it. And he turned to me and said, it is the Ferris wheel as she described it. <laughs> so, uh, and our actors really do climb the real Ferris wheel that she described. It. They weren't stunt doubles, it was really our real actors up there in the freezing cold. So there is there is something that, that makes it a little less sci-fi and makes it a little bit more like we're people but we're in a different time time period. It gives you a, a sort of a, a you are there quality. Just to add one more thing about Veronica. Um, the last author we worked with was in much less of a position to have notes, and that was F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> So we were certainly anxious uh, because the book was such a phenomenon about meeting Veronica and how she would react. And one of the real pleasures for us, and I'm still sort of sort of still shocked at her openness, is we had a production office in Chicago, and she would come and she would see the production diner, designer's sketches of, you know, and now starting to understand that a hundred artisans had been hired and would start to render the things that she had made up. And as she would look at the architectural sketches, 
she'd always look through and she'd kind of go, oh, that's a really good idea. And it was with just sort of a, an openness and a respect for other creative people doing their particular work. Thanks. <laughs> um, I watched the movie last night, so I don't want to compare it to other um, novels in our generation, but I think it's inevitable because, you know, it's targeted at teens and it's set in a dystopian future. So did you guys feel any pressure, like, distinguishing Divergent from other movies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, my feeling was that I wanted to make it, it, it is obviously as a female heroine in a, you know, in the future. And, um, but my feeling was that I wanted to make it obviously as different as possible than those movies. And, and often those, um, we were just talking about that, but we, the, often those movies are, they're sort of grim and sort of gray and bleak and post-apocalyptic. And so one thing was to kind of tip it a little bit more toward, at least in the beginning, toward kind of a utopia in the beginning and to actually shoot it in a much more luminous and light kind of way. Tris wants to be part of this society, wants to find her place in it. And so we tried to actually make it seem to be initially a society that was worth, that was worth joining before you obviously start to see the cracks um, in all of it. So, um, but I think it's a very different story. Um, she has, it's, she's just, she's not on the run the whole time. She's not um, just trying to survive. She's trying to, she's actually having really complex um, relationships with a whole variety of people, with her friends, with her parents, with her, her mentors, with her sort of superior officers, with people who are trying to help her, with her people who are trying to undercut her um, the whole time in a kind of a, a real world, even in the, it's in the future, setting. Uh, also, um, our, our lead character is very different in that um, the person in the other movie <laughs> um, that, that we love and admire um, is very, very strong from the beginning, whereas our girl, Tris, isn't even allowed to look in the mirror when she starts off. She's, she's, has, she has a wistful longing for something that she doesn't even know she can ever grasp. So we have a story of somebody that learns not only to look at herself in the mirror, but to actually take on the smartest person in the world and win. So that's a very different kind of a story. And the other thing that's quite different, I think, is ours is an urban story. And the other one is not set in an urban environment. It's in a lot more fantastic cities, more fantastical. And the forest of the forest. So it's very different visually. But I, I would say the, the lead journey of what, what the character has to go through is much more like thick, like a heightened versions of things that, as Veronica said, we all go through. Who, who, who am I? If I show people who I really am, will they hate me? Will they kill me? Or will they accept me? Will I be strong if I'm different? If I, will I, will I be able to own my own strength? So those are things that the average person does think of, maybe not on the scale that Tris has to face it. So I think it's different. Hi, um, Shailene is great as a heroine. Was she always your first choice? Um, or and how many actresses did you see for the part? And Veronica, were you part of the audition process for that? She actually always was my first choice. I had seen her just in The Descendants, actually, and um, had been knocked out by her. And so she was, you know, obviously you put together a list of people because sometimes your first choice isn't available and things like that. But and we met her and um, and that was it. And I was pretty much. Yeah. But, but we, we were, we all were gearing up to start a major across America casting search as any responsible person would do to try and say who's Tris. And, and she just totally derailed the process. <laughs> oh, you she, she didn't want to do it initially. Yeah, I think she had to evaluate whether, you know, she's, uh, concerned about the franchise thing. Well, I, I also think all of that took place in about a course of about two and a half days when, <laughs> you know, it's, it was a lot to take on and um, scary in a way. Um, so, but it really, you know, we asked her to do it on a Tuesday and by, you know, at the end of, yeah, Friday morning she was on. But I'm sure in that process, in, the, in that interim, there was a lot of discussion, but um, it happened really quickly. Did Veronica 
Um, well, when all this casting was happening, I was working on the third book in the series. Um, and you know, writing is is what I love to do. Um, I don't, you know, I don't make movies. This has been wonderful. <laughs> it's been wonderful to be a part of, really. But I am at my core just someone who wants to write novels. So um, for me, it was like I, I trust you guys. You know, uh, if, if you like like someone, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, I think we great, said, but... you know, I think once we decide, like, well, we want to go, we said to Veronica, like, yeah. this is, you know, because if Veronica had said, like, you know what, I hate, hate, hate that person, we would, you know, we would have listened to that as well. Yeah, just we, to... we might have had been a discussion or even an argument or something like that, but, you know, we, we would have heard her. Yeah, we didn't, like, ever test, you know, how, like, how much, I don't know, how much influence I had, because they just kept saying, like, here's who we're considering, and I would be like, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> 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 Yes, the, we, from our point of view, there was an anxiety because we knew these people had been born inside Veronica. So it would have been really terrible, even in sort of our own sense of the, of, of the quality of the choice, if she said, that person isn't at all like Triss. And so we got over the Shailene hump, and the four hump was in many ways much more terrifying. Shailene, as I said, sort of emerged to all of us in, in, in a pretty strong way. For the guy, we were in trouble. And we were seeing all of the young stars in town. There was always that kind of jockeying from the major agencies of this guy's the next Steve McQueen, this guy's the next Paul, Paul Newman. And as we brought each of those guys in to read with Shailene, she blew them away. She made them seem weak. and and. So we kept looking, and finally we tested uh, Theo, who, you know, in the first moment was so exactly right. And, and when you've tasted failure for several weeks, it's even clearer. <laughs> you keep looking, and, and, and by the way, the movie was moving forward, and you're thinking, wow, if this guy is weak or a little bit disappointing, the whole spine, the drive of the story, the propulsion wouldn't be there. So we finally chose Theo. And, and I'll, I'll let Lucy tell this, because she tells it better, but we then had the moment in Chicago of showing Theo with, I would say, with great anxiety, because again, four was inside her, and if she kind of went, ooh, that's not four. Well, yeah, I did see the screen test for So, so we do that. <laughs> yeah, it was a story. Plus, we were shooting probably in six weeks or something yeah. like that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I hope you like it. <laughs> yeah, so we were nervous about showing it to Veronica, showing that we had a screen test, of, which we thought was fantastic, and we had introduced him to Summit and um, in Lionsgate. And when they first heard his name and said, who's he? We said, just go home and ask your wife about Mr. Pamuk. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that we got him through that hurdle. And so we were kind of nervous, a little bit like sort of, you know, meeting the groom's, the bride's family or whatever it is to go, <laughs> to go show with Theo. Because again, Shay, you could see the descendants and you could see she was phenomenal. There was no question about it. She'd already been vetted by the critical world and um, and so we showed her Theo and he improvised in this little scene and during the scene he says to her come here come here and Veronica's sitting in her chair and we didn't know you that well then and suddenly she gets up like this and he goes go go <laughs> <laughs> and we go okay this looks good and the next thing I could we didn't want to make her self-conscious and we looked at and I like peeked over again and she's going like this Chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that was a bingo. <laughs> Why is he so late in the process? It's me. Why was it so late in the process? Because With him. Because we were. I mean, why did he come into it so late? He's living in England. We did see people. We saw, we saw lots of people in England. We saw people in Germany. We saw people in Denmark. We saw people all over the world. Um, I don't know why he he came into it so late but you know it's a process that you you know, look for names first people who have you know have a profile already been in some successful movies and then you know it's certainly we're looking for anybody so um <laughs> it's very rare someone that talented of that age hasn't doesn't have a profile in movies that's that was yeah and he, when you've seen surprise. the movie he is he's incredible mm -hmm. he's a great actor he's a great screen presence he's an incredible fighter he's he really has it all one more question. Thank you. Last question. Oh. Hi, uh, Veronica. Actually, I'm a big fan of your, of your book series. It's a very thoughtful and 
relevant to what we're going through today, the ideas of conformity and so forth, and the terrors of that. But this is an interesting medium to put this book in. It's a very thoughtful film as a result, and for both Ian and Neil, how was it, how was it create a divergent film? It, it tackled so many different genres at one time. Was it cumbersome at times? Was it challenging? And did you have pressure not to kind of like talk down to your audience? It's a very thoughtful message in the film. Well, I definitely wasn't going to talk. For me, I was making an I know it's a, a young adult book. I was making an adult movie. Not an that, adult movie. Whatever that meant. <laughs> 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 and to bring me back to the NC-17. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but, you, you know, I, I think all those themes apply to somebody that's 16, who's 26, who's 36, 46. Of, you know, where do I fit in the world? Who am I? You know, what's the cause? You know, Am I different? And if I'm different, do I hide it? Do I try to blend in? Or do I speak with my own voice? And then what's the cost of doing that? And obviously in the, in the movie, you know, they're, they're gonna kill her. Um, but I think it's really just a metaphor for anybody. You know, what do you go out on a limb for? <coughs> Who do you speak up for? When, when do you choose to kind of just, you know, conform and when do you you not. So I, I thought all those themes, and then ultimately those are sort of personal things, and then the larger themes of, you know, how do we how do we get along in the world with each other? How do we as a society or groups, you know, how, how can we ever find a system? And there is a system that starts these five factions in the movie that seems to be working. Um, but how, you know, how do we, and then it falls apart. And so after that, you're like, well, how do we ever find consensus? How do we ever get along? And have to, or harmony or even peace. Thank you all very much. Thank you.